Good afternoon. On behalf of our Chicago Regional Director, Marilyn A. Sanders, I would like to thank you for joining us for today's Data Summit topic, Census Bureau data for the American Indian and Alaska Native population and businesses. We're delighted to have you with us to broaden your knowledge during our expansive Census Bureau Data Summit series. My name is Janine Beasley, Partnership Coordinator for the Chicago Region, and I am your host for today. Before I go into the agenda, I'd like to cover some basic information and house rules. This session is being recorded. This summit will be recorded for the benefit of attendees and other stakeholders who are unable to be present. For those who do not wish to be recorded, please take this time to opt out and drop from this session. Because of the large number of participants on this webinar, everyone has been muted. We encourage everyone to utilize the chat for any questions or feedback. Due to the volume of participants, we will not be able to answer all questions. Any questions that are not answered, please contact ask.census.gov. For any media-related inquiries regarding apportionment or redistricting, please reach out to the Public Information Office at PIO at census.gov. For your convenience and future reference, please expect the PDF and resource sheet for today's presentation within 48 hours. The data dissemination team's point of contact will be provided near the end of this presentation. And remember, this webinar is being recorded. So what's the objective for today's data summit? This summit on American Indian and Alaska Native is designed for the novice data user and will show you how to explore the data tools that the Census Bureau offers for the AIAN population and AIAN-owned businesses as well as navigate the My Tribal Area app. This web app provides quick and easy access to select statistics from the American Community Survey. At the conclusion of this session, you will have an increased awareness of the vast data products available through the U.S. Census Bureau. You will better be equipped to utilize some of the free online tools available on census.gov. You will also have resources and toolkits to assist with navigating data available through census.gov. Now let's walk through today's program. Our agenda will include opening remarks from our area regional census manager, Elisa Johnson, followed by the Chicago Regional Director, Marilyn A. Sanders, Michelle Butler, our AIAN program manager will then introduce the Census Bureau Acting Director, Dr. Ron Jarman, and our AIAN partners, Chris Colorock of Cook Inlet Housing Authority, and Gwen Lomayezma from the National Congress of American Indians. Following our AIAN partners, the Chicago Region's Partnership Coordinator, Dion Roberts Omega will introduce our presenter, David Schuler, Data Dissemination Specialist from the Chicago Region. After our key presenter, Dion will moderate the Q&A session, followed by a wrap-up of today's program. Before I turn it over to Mrs. Johnson to present her opening remarks, I'd like to provide a high-level update of the 2020 Census. This information has already been made public. As you know, every 10 years, the Census Bureau takes account of every person living in the United States as required by the Constitution. The Bureau has been working diligently to process responses and assess its quality as we work towards releasing the first results from the 2020 Census. These first results would include three tables of counts for the nation of each of the 50 states. These counts include apportionment, resident, and overseas population. The data is used to divide the 435 memberships or seats in the U.S. House of Representatives 
amongst the 50 states based on the state population count from the census. The apportionment counts are scheduled to be released by April 30th, 2021. We know the release date is a hot topic for many, but that is the latest information that we have to provide today. So in the interest of time, with today's goal in mind, we, only, we will only answer questions specific to the data summit. Any media related inquiries should be referred to our public information office at PIO at census.gov. And any general questions we don't cover today can be sent to ask.census.gov. As an additional resource, you can find links to our latest updates and informational materials on apportionment and our press kit at the link listed on this site, and they can be found actually in the newsroom on census.gov. As a friendly reminder, we'd like to inform you again that this webinar is being recorded, and to please accept, expect a PDF of today's presentation within 48 hours. After the census shifts in population and congressional representation amongst the states require the redrawing of the district boundaries within states, the Census Bureau provides states with the local area population count that they need to redraw or redistrict their congressional or other legislative boundaries. Our current schedules point to delivering these data to the state and the public by September 30th, 2021. The redistricting data includes counts of population by race, ethnicity, Hispanic or Latino origin, voting age, housing occupancy status, and group quarters population, all at the census block level. We will also be releasing a summary redistricting file in the legacy format to all states by mid to late August. This will assist states who have a pressing need to assess redistricting data sooner than September 30th. This is the same format produced and provided to all states since the 2000 census or possibly before. For more information on redistricting, including links to geographic support products such as maps, cables, and files, visit the redistricting press kit at the link listed on, slide, on this slide or by visiting our newsroom on census.gov. I would like to reinstate that we will not answer any questions regarding apportionment or redistricting, any media-related questions reg pardon me, regarding those topics should be referred to our public information office at PIO at census.gov. Now let's continue with our program. I'd like for you to help me welcome the Chicago Region Area Regional Census Manager, Elisa Johnson. Starting with the Census Bureau in 2008, Ms. Johnson has held roles as the Data Dissemination Specialist for the State of Illinois, National Partnership Coordinator during the 2010 decennial, and Area Regional Census Manager before being promoted to Deputy Regional Director over the over partnership for the 2020 decennial. As a leader of more than 200 partnership team members, she has worked with high-level partners and networks, including our state complete count committees, and ensured the formation of partnerships in our large cities such as Chicago, Detroit, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. Please extend a warm welcome to Elisa Johnson. Elisa? Thank you so much, Janine. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, each and every one of our partners, our regional partners here in the Chicago region, and all of our partners across the country. It's such a pleasure to be here this afternoon, and we really hope that you all take away some great information. We, get, we have a lineup of great speakers this afternoon, so please enjoy our summit today. At this time, I have the absolute distinct pleasure of welcoming the Chicago Regional Director, Marilyn A. Sanders. Mrs. Ker Mrs. Sanders is currently serving as the Regional Director for the U.S. Census Bureau Chicago Region. Her extensive career spans four decennial censuses and multiple survey data collection innovations and improvements. 
She continues to lead the eight state region with impeccable vision and foresight. We are so fortunate here in the Chicago region. Mrs. Sanders has served in many different capacities and her extensive knowledge of field data collection has been an invaluable asset to the Chicago region. To date, she has received many accommodations during her four year, her four decade career, earning three bronze medals in 1992, 2000 and 2011 and the Presidential Hammer Award in 2010. She has been nominated twice for federal for the Federal Employee of the Year for her outstanding public service. Again, we are so fortunate here in the Chicago region. Mrs. Sanders brings strong, a very strong commitment and excellence to leading the eight state region. Mrs. Sanders earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in business management with a concentration in economics from Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. She attended the University of South Alabama and Governor State University, pursuing postgraduate studies in geography and, and statistics. She is a proud member of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. I welcome to today's summit, Marilyn A. Sanders, the Chicago Regional Director. Thank you, Elisa. Good afternoon. So I guess we will continue to welcome you here today. We are very pleased that you decided to join us. So to our long time and those who are new to census data, welcome to the Census Bureau's data summit for American Indian and Alaskan Native population and business. We are delighted to have this opportunity to express, first of all, our thanks as a collective for your support in our field data collection. So on behalf of the five other regional directors, Mr. Grandy in Atlanta, Mr. Armstrong in Philadelphia, Mr. Baylor, who's temporarily NPC director, the New York acting director, Mr. Ho, Ms. Lacey in Dallas and Denver, and Ms. Lamb in LA. We stand committed to this work. We strive to collect quality data every single day to inform the many impactful decisions that are made by our partners. Today, we will explore using census data, primarily how to access the wealth of information available to you. We are truly grateful for the past engagement the consultations, the partnerships created in support of our mission, and many of you supported us during the 2020 census by hosting meetings, recruiting events, you offered space, and you helped carry the message of the importance of the U.S. Census Bureau and the data we collect. We could not have done it without you. Many surveys reached many respondents. And without you, we would not have this data to present. Now, we're here today to provide you a resource to support the various needs of your constituents and those you serve. We want to ensure that we recognize your support as we continue to engage in a true and lasting relationship with all of our tribal nations and other data users. We want to be a resource for you we want you to be able to trust and depend on our data meeting your needs while we fulfill our mission. Your presence today is important to us. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Mrs. Sanders. We're grateful for your leadership here in the Chicago region and your remarks have definitely set the tone for today's program. We now have Michelle Butler, our AIAN Program Manager, to introduce the Census Bureau Acting Director, Dr. Ron Jarman. Michelle? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Janine. At this time, I have the honor of introducing the Acting Director of the U.S. Census Bureau, Dr. Ron Jarman. Dr. Jarman is currently the Deputy Director and Chief Operating Officer and has been since January of 2019. He performed the non-exclusive functions and duties of the director from July 2017 to January 2019, and previously has served as the associate director for economic programs. He led the team 
for the 2017 economic census, overseeing a move to 100% internet data collection and leveraging enterprise investments to minimize system application and dissemination costs. From 2011 to 2016, Dr. German served as the Assistant Director for Research and Methodology. Dr. Jarman holds a PhD in economics from the University of Oregon, an elected fellow of the American Statistical Association. He has published papers in areas of industrial organization, business dynamics, and entrepreneurship, technology, and firm performance, urban economics, data access, and statistical disclosure avoidance. Welcome, Dr. Jarman. Well, thank you, Michelle. So I'm hoping that everyone can hear me. Um, so uh, just let me extend my welcome to everyone who's participating uh, in our 2021 Census Bureau Data Summit series. Um, you know, there's going to be more of these, and so if you, if you like what you're you're hearing, um, there's uh, the other topics that we'll be discussing. So so look forward to seeing you. Uh, continue to, to learn about our data through the, through the other parts of the series. So, um, first of all, I really want to thank you all for your participation in the 2020 Census. And without your unwavering support, um, we, we couldn't have gotten this, this big task done. And it was really a historic time last year. Undoubtedly, none of us will be forgetting it soon. Now, I'd like to take this moment to share with you a, a bit more about the Census Bureau and, and the statistics that we offer. And, um, you know, the saying, knowledge is power, definitely applies to the work that we do at the Census Bureau. And our data summits are designed to provide you with just a glimpse of all the information that's available to you and, and hopefully, you know, keep you coming back for more. Our, our goal with our data summits is to showcase how the vast uses of Census Bureau statistics are there for everyone. And today's American Indian and Alaska Native webinar will show you how to explore the data and tools that the Census Bureau offers for the AIN population and AIN owned businesses, as well as to navigate the My Tri Tribal Area app. This app provides quick and easy access to selected statistics from the American Community Survey, and the ACS provides detailed demographic, social, economic, and housing statistics every year for our nation's communities. Whatever your mission is, chances are we have resources that can help you improve your business, your organization, and your community. And that's where the data summits like today uh, session come in. The Census Bureau is committing to provided accurate, quality, and timely data about our nation's people and economy. And we hope that after today's session, you are ready to tap into the resources that we provide and continue to use them for years to come. Our team is here to teach you how to navigate and interpret the data sets, answer any questions you may have, and provide you with an action plan to get you started on your projects. So just uh, but before Turning it back over, um, just let me kind of hit, hit a few highlights um, from last year's 2020 census. Just on, and there won't be a quiz on this at, at the end, but I, I think you'll find some of these these uh, these facts uh, fun and and amazing. So uh, w we used over 450 uh, permanent and temporary employees on the ground, interviewing respondents, processing mail-in and self-responses and distributing personal protective equipment because of the, the pandemic. Our census questionnaire assistance uh, centers received over 13 million phone calls and enumerated over 2 million housing units in 14 different languages, including English. We had 3.5 million people start an application uh, to, to work for the census during the 2020 census. 600 1,000 NERFU enumerators were cleared through background checks, and we hired 435,000 people. Um, and I, I'd like to say that, you know, we, we hired them in about as quick time as Amazon.com does to hire their, their temporary Christmas uh, staff. Um, we, cover, we accounted for 98.98% of the addresses nationwide, very successful enumeration. Uh, including the island areas, um, we conducted the census in nine different time zones, and we partnered with nearly 400,000 organizations, nonprofits, and complete count committees uh, to pr promote the census. And so, again, our success was 
uh, made possible through the hard work of not only uh, the census staff and our partner organizations, but all of you. So um, enjoy the summit. I hope that you learned something um, that you can take back and, and use in your in your day-to-day -day life. Um, thank you in advance, and thanks for joining us here today. Thank you so much, Dr. Jarman. And now I'd like to welcome and introduce our first AIAN partner, who is Chris Kolarok. Mr. Kolarok is the Director of the Public Policy and Government Affairs Office with the Cook Inlet Housing Authority in Anchorage, Alaska. CIHA has is the trially designated housing entity for the Cook Inlet region and provides affordable housing and workforce housing to all people in Anchorage. Anchorage. CIHA's mission of independence through housing is not possible without accurate and timely census data. Prior to CIHA, Chris was president of the Bering Straits Housing Authority in Nome, Alaska. Welcome, Mr. Kolarik. Thank you very much. I hope uh, the sound is all right. I think I uh, appreciate the opportunity to offer a few comments. Uh, I want to talk just briefly about what um, what kind of data we use, uh, not in terms of the tables, but but the qualitative uh, impact of the data we use. Um, we use data from the census in two ways. In a primary use, we use census data when we are applying for uh, competitive applications uh, for funding, either uh, governmental applications uh, or private foundation applications. Uh, census data provides um, the common and uh, uh, normal uh, sort of statistics for proving how how our projects are needed. Um, we also use census data in advocating for increased funding or changes to regulations with local, state, and federal uh, legislators. Uh, and uh, and we use data to make sure that we are appropriately allocating uh, resources from uh, uh, to businesses across Anchorage when we were selected to administer uh, funding from the municipality of Anchorage to uh, businesses who were in need of relief funding. Uh, we had a responsibility for a good geographic distribution. Uh, Agnes Jacobs, thanks for that question. I will address the Indian Housing Block Grant uh, versus census data in a bit. In short, uh, the Indian Housing Block Grant population uh, is based on census data with a few minor um, adjustments, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the second way we use data is actually um, uh, is apropos of this question. So uh, on a secondary use, we use uh, census data because it establishes income eligibility for housing programs. Um, so some of that data is supplied by the federal agencies. Um, and we use that census data uh, to establish priority geographies uh, for some programs. For example, a qualified census tract in the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program um, is based on census data. So this is all a uh, this is all a long introduction of saying everything that is involved in low income housing or affordable housing depends on accurate census data. So um, we should all be worried and we should all be attentive to the census. In terms of the uh, biggest program um, that that many American Indian Alaska Natives use is the Indian Housing Block Grant. Uh, the Indian Housing Block Grant uh, is actually based on census. The, 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 the Census Bureau runs a special tabulation and provides census data to HUD in order for them to feed the formula for the Indian Housing Block Grant. Uh, so uh, IH, in some uh, venues, you'll hear IHBG data 
um, versus census data, it's actually not very different. The only difference may be in whether or not someone has identified as a um, American Indian or Alaska Native uh, in a certain geography and where a tribe uh, claims their geography. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to get a full list of all of the tribal housing geographies just on the like census fact finder. It would they would have to do additional work to to pull that data, um, which is why they they give it to HUD every year. Uh, so, you know, just a piece of that, um, uh, Alaska Native Village statistical areas, the geography and population are based on decennial census data for the population, uh, and income and housing conditions are based on the ACS data. Uh, I want to take a second and talk a bit about uh, some of the concerns with the census. Um, and particularly with differential privacy, I think there's some opportunities here for improvement. Uh, this morning, you might have read that 16 states joined, uh, 16 states uh, filed a lawsuit, including Alabama, to stop the implementation of differential privacy. Uh, and that's because differential privacy essentially injects noise, or basically, in a simplified way, picks up people from one area and puts them in another area so we cannot identify them with powerful computers. While the privacy is laudable, the impact on small areas is incredibly huge. For example, when I was the president of the Nome-based Bering Straits Regional Housing Authority, um, centered in the uh, end of the historic Iditarod Trail, uh, 700 miles from Anchorage, our region was the size of Maryland and it had 10,000 people with 1,700, um, uh, sorry, 17 villages. Again, the size of Maryland, 17 villages, 10,000 people. Running differential privacy in an area with such small population centers meant that 700 people were essentially picked up out of their tribal boundaries and put into uh, uh, outside jurisdictions, meaning that their tribe was no longer able to count their population for formulaic funding. Uh, essentially, it decreased the population of, of tribes uh, to protect their privacy, which is an incredibly difficult position for uh, under-resourced tribes who are already facing incredible housing challenges. Um, so that's one of the reasons why uh, AIAN stakeholders, uh, including NCAI, uh, Cookland Housing Authority, uh, Alaska Federation of Natives, have been working very hard on the census to uh, to modify um, and and provide a, a product that works for small native areas because most of our native areas across the country will be affected by the census. Uh, finally, I think a uh, an undercount study. Uh, is necessary for small areas, including rural Alaska. Uh, there are many tribal funding opportunities that are affected by census population data, and an undercount study affects that size of the population. Uh, and the ACS sample size, uh, the, the size of the sample in the ACS survey, it, it affects your funding but they make a phone call to uh, to cell phones. And I don't know if you're aware, but in small and very poor tribal areas, uh, different cell phones start going out of service. Uh, and so when you have a small uh, when you have a small cell phone sample size, um, very small movements make very big changes. For example, when the ACS was implemented uh, as one of the primary uh, data products, for the Indian Housing Block Grant, all of my villages saw a 10% decrease in population in 2018 when HUD switched over to using ACS for our housing and income characteristics, um, which is, uh, you know, the population didn't go down 10%. Uh, the numbers we were supplied went down 10%. So this is all a big way of saying census data is important. It's the best source of data, and we really need the Bureau 
uh, to make sure that the data is accurate and reliable. Uh, otherwise, people who are already uh, poor are going to be hurt the most. Uh, thanks. I'm happy to take any questions in the chat, or you can email me at the C-K-O-L-E-R-O-K at cookinlithousing.org. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kalarak. And now I'd like to welcome and introduce our next AIAN partner, who is Gwen Lomayezva. Ms. Lomayezva is a Hopi tribal member and a researcher at the National Congress of American Indians Policy Research. She has received her bachelor's degree in, from Brown University in Political Science, International Comparative Policies, and her master's degree in public policy from King's College London. As an NCAI Policy Research Center researcher, she conducts research and data analysis on a broad range of issues to inform tribal policy and strategic priorities. She leads the NCAI Policy Research Center Census Information Center, serves as chair for the National Census Information Center Network, works on a National Academy of Sciences informal expert group on the Census Disclosure Avoidance System, and serves on several additional groups related to census privacy algorithms for NCAI. Welcome, Ms. Lomayezba. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction, and hello, everyone. Uh, as was mentioned, my name is Gwen Evans Lomayezba. I'm a researcher with the National Congress of American Indian Policy Research Center. I lead our Census Information Center, and I'm hoping. Today, I'll give a very brief overview about what the Census Information Centers are. Oh, I'm muffled. All right. Um, uh, I'm not sure how to fix this. Can you hear me a little bit better now? Oh, perfect. Okay, I'll do that. Switch my microphone. Okay. <laughs> so today, I'm just going to go brief overview about what the Census Information Centers are, how we can help communities access data. I'll cover some of the census data analyses that NCAI has worked on over this past year. And I'll finish with some of the most the data sets that I'm most curious and excited to look into more. So first, the National Congress of American Indian Policy Research Center is a designated Census Information Center, or CIC. The CICs exist as an official program of the U.S. Census Bureau and are recognized as official sources of demographic, economic, and social statistics produced by the census. Oh, it's still very garbled. I'm not sure how to fix the audio. I'm sorry. Um, is this a little bit better? Um, so the, the vision of the CIC program is to facilitate community empowerment through sustainable data access, analysis, and education. The NCAI Policy Research Center provides tribal leaders with easy-to-understand data analyses, information briefs, and access to census information and data products that can be used for research, planning, and decision-making purposes. Uh, we're able to answer questions about census data, and if we don't have the information about specific technical questions, we can connect folks with experts who do have the answers to those questions. So it's a little bit about our role as a CIC. And some of the analyses that we conducted this past year include looking at the 2020 enumeration self-response rate and data analyses of the 2020 privacy measures that Chris mentioned in his presentation. Um, between July and October 2020, the NCAI CIC produced weekly updated reports on the self-response rates for census-designated tribal areas. The purpose of producing these analyses was to help different regional areas and different tribal nations know what their current response rates were so that they could plan their get out the count efforts. Another data analysis focused on over the last year analyzed the impact and the changes made to the 2020 Census Disclosure Avoidance System, 
which is the privacy system being used on the 2020 decennial data set. We used the demonstration products produced by the U.S. Census Bureau to analyze the impact and a new privacy system is having on the American Indian and Alaska Native data. We've written several educational and informational briefs about the new privacy system and the impacts to the American Indian and Alaska Native data. These are freely accessible on our publications page. We also mapped the results of our analyses on ArcGIS to visually show tribal nations how the privacy measures and the changes to the privacy measures continue to influence the quality and the usability of American Indian and Alaska Native data for the 2020 decennial data set. At the end of the month, the Census Bureau will be releasing two more demonstration products for the public to analyze. And I'm looking forward to updating our analyses to include the new results. From the updated analysis, we'll be producing two more research update briefs on the topic next month. Uh, so I'd say keep an eye out on those if you're interested. And the demonstration products that are being released on April 30th are really what I'm personally looking forward to the most in the next month from the U.S. Census Bureau. We're also really looking forward to the release of the 2020 census data and being able to create regional profiles for tribal nations. Um, and I covered the Census Information Centers very quickly, some of the NCAI census data work and the data that I'm looking forward to most to be able to analyze. I just wanna say a huge thank you to C. Alexander and the rest of the Census Bureau for all of their work on these many different data sets and products. We all use them in many different forms. And thank you for having and inviting me to speak with you all today. And I know I didn't have a ton of time, so I can answer questions in chat or um, I'll put my email if anybody has any follow-up questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lomayesba, uh, for your remarks. And now I turn it back over to Janine Beasley. Janine, take it away. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you to our AIAN partners. We'll now have Dion Robinson-Mega, the Chicago Region's Partnership Coordinator, to introduce our presenter, David Schuler. Dion? Thank you so much, Janine. And finally, it is with great pleasure to introduce our trainer for today, Mr. David Schuler. David is one of our masterful data dissemination specialists who engages the public with census business, economic, trade, and demographic data. This high quality data supports business plans, grant opportunities, and critical decision making for long-term planning. David holds a business analysis professional certificate from Duke University, an MBA from Keller Graduate School of Management, and a Bachelor of Science in Electronic Systems from Southern Illinois University. David is a Marine Corps vet, and we honor him for his 10 years of service, and now, David, I'm proud to turn it over to you. Take it away. There we go. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm uh, David Schuler again, from the uh, uh, U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, I'm a data dissemination specialist. And today we'll be learning about I'm sorry, you have a little technical difficulty here. Bear with me one moment. Okay. Well, at this point, I'm, I'm hoping you guys can uh, can see my uh, whole screen.
There we go. Hopefully, hopefully that's better, and you're seeing uh, the entire uh, screen filled with uh, my presentation. Again, um, I am David Schuler, and we're going to learn about some census geography today. Uh, we're going to hear uh, about what our constitutional mission is and what we do besides that. Uh, we're going to see how to track the U.S. how we track the U.S. economy and discover a few things about economic growth with Business Builder. We're also going to take a look at um, uh, tribal data from a high level at, um, on the uh, tribal data, My Tribal Area app. And then uh, we're going to dive into uh, the shallow end of uh, data.census.gov and take a look at some other, um, the available tribal data there. The first concept I'm going to talk about very quickly is uh, geographic concepts. Um, we have uh, states that break down into counties, that break down into census tracts, that break down into block groups. And that is the lowest level data you'll see for the American Community Survey. Uh, for the decennial, you will see um, the level below that, which is block group data. Uh, our general uh, hierarchy uh, is uh, listed here on the uh, uh, right-hand side of the screen. And let's see if I can get my laser pointer there. There we go. It's listed here on the right-hand side of the screen. And uh, it goes, uh, like I said before, nations, uh, states, counties, census tracts, blocks. Everything is calculated from census blocks and all of these other um, uh, boundary uh, statistical and uh, uh, other places are out of census blocks. Then we have the actual tribal um, hierarchy, which is uh, from census blocks again uh, for uh, uh, tri uh, tribes that are in the in the uh, lower 48. Uh, we have uh, tribal block groups. Uh, tribal census tracts, which roll up to the entire um, uh, American Indian um, on-reservation and off-reservation trust lands. Uh, for Oklahoma, we have a little uh, slightly different um, uh, layout of the uh, of the uh, uh, statistical area, as well as for Alaska Natives. So the basic building blocks are the block, which is the very uh, lowest level. It's generally a small area in a city. Um, it, it has no bearing on an actual, if you live in an urban area, a city block. It's basically just a uh, grouping of housing that we use to tabulate for, um, for data for such as census tracts, Indian reservations. Okay. Uh, block group is a statistical division of census tracts, and it's generally between 600 and 3,000 people. Um, and there's the op optimum size. There's um, roughly 39 uh, blocks per block group. Tracts, uh, tracts can be anywhere between 12 and 8,000 people, and they can cover a huge area, just depending on population, um, or they can cover a very small area. Um, when we talk about economic geographies, we're talking about um, the, you know, having data at the nation level, at the region, at the state level, and the county level. And then um, data is also released for uh, metropolitan areas, um, zip codes, and economic places, schools, and governments. They do not use track and block groups uh, in, to calculate the um, you will not see that data in the economic data. Okay. Um, little uh, uh, cross tab here, um, it, just to, to mention, uh, in economic terms, we call pl uh, places economic places. Um, ACS calls uh, uh, zip codes, uh, zip code tabulated areas, because they're only uh, set once, uh, a, once in a decade at the decennial. Whereas the economic program used zip codes 
um, which can be can be changed by the U.S. Postal Service because that's who they're governed by. And those two are, uh, for lack of a better term, synced up uh, during decennial uh, to uh, give people a, a consistent uh, look at the uh, geographical area. Um, tribal geographies, we call them tribal areas in ACS, tribal businesses. So let's take a look at what demographic data we have. Census Bureau does um, over 130 uh, surveys each year. So we're, we're spending, a, a, you know, we have a tremendous amount of data that we collect out there. Uh, we collect it for uh, both um, our internal programs like the American Community Survey, um, and, but we also collect stuff for Bureau of Justice statistics like the National Crime um, Survey, non-victim survey. Uh, for uh, for health and human services, we do several different uh, programs, ambulatory care. For the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, we do all the footwork for the um, uh, for all the unemployment numbers through the uh, current population survey. Okay, so we've got we've got the uh, uh, decennial uh, data available, which basically is those uh, uh, 10 questions uh, concerning each person in the household, um, looking at uh, uh, how many people live in the household and the sex, age, and race of each person. Uh, then uh, the, the decennial data, of course, is uh, for our constitutionally mandated um, purposes. Uh, it's uh, Article 1, Section 2 um, uh, says that all persons shall be accounted uh, for uh, for purposes of apportionment. Of course, um, that uh, definition has changed uh, over the years by, uh, by amendment uh, to be inclusive of um, uh, all people. Uh, it's a total uh, population count, and it decides the number of representatives. Okay. Redistricting data, well, that comes out in, in uh, by the end of September, and the states use that to actually spell out all of their um, legislative areas. Okay. The data products that are available are detailed tables, and they will be um, publicly available at data.census.gov um, after, uh, usually start rolling out in uh, the year after the apportionment data and redistricting data is released. So you'll see a lot of reports roll out over time and a lot of detailed data. Okay, the American Community Survey. That surveys 3.5 million uh, addresses annually, and it helps determine um, uh, over 675 billion of federal government spending each year. I always liken that to McDonald's who um, they started out on their signs with 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, and then it was a billion, and then it was billions and billions served. So it's that number is based on, uh, you know, Congress and how they're uh, using that. But they use the American Community Survey to, uh, you know, to help determine some of that spending. Covers 40, uh, 40 topics. Um, there is approximately 11 billion estimates estimates done each year. Okay. It's done, the data sets we turn out are one-year data sets uh, with populations of 65,000 or more. Those pop out in December, October, we have a supplemental to that, which gives us populations of uh, 20,000 or more. And then in December, uh, we, get the, um, we get all of the population uh, counted in that. So uh, basically, you have one-year and, and five-year estimates to choose from, and there is guidance uh, for how to use those. Okay. What areas are covered? Well, we have social, demographic, economic, and, and then uh, part of the population um, statistics, and then we have housing variables. We have an excellent one of the things I, I uh, uh, you know, really admire about the Census Bureau. We have excellent methodology uh, and technical um, 
writing on our website of uh, every survey we do, and it's down to um, you know down to the specifics. We have a bunch of really great handbooks for data users um, of all types. Specifically of note here is the uh, what data users of American Indian and Alaska Natives need to know. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little bit about um, economic data. Um, the U.S. Census Bureau um, provides economic data that are, are, are key for both uh, the U.S. government and for measuring our, our uh, nation's health. And it's official statistics that actual companies, you know, can use. Um, they come out monthly and quarterly. Uh, they are some of the timeliest data available. Annual surveys have a larger sample uh, and provide the most up-to-date trend data. Every five years, we do the uh, economic census, which measures um, businesses and provides the most comprehensive data set available. These, uh, the survey set the standard for U.S. economic statistics, and are, it's fueled. It comes from um, businesses. Uh, who report their data out, as well as uh, administrative data from other government agencies. We do 13 of the 36 principal federal economic indicators are produced by the U.S. Census Bureau. And those important statistics, uh, as they roll out, um, can impact markets and um, are extremely important. And all of them are available on our economics indicator page um, that consequently are uh, a, uh, aside, it, it presents very well in a, in a uh, mobile format. Okay. We also collect six additional uh, indicators that are reported by other federal agencies, as I mentioned before, Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, reports out the data we collect from the current population survey. Um, that gives you uh, employment numbers and other uh, Census Bureau data. In the U.S., there's 30 million businesses, 330 million Americans, uh, 93,000 tribal, state, and local governments that rely on our, our data to make um, informed decisions. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about data tools, and I'm going to give a quick demonstration of a couple of the tools we have. We have many t uh, data tools out there. Um, we have uh, Quick Facts for populations over 5,000. Uh, we have the My uh, Tribal Area, which uh, it gives a, uh, a breakdown from the American Community Survey of, uh, of uh, specifically on uh, uh, populations in uh, federally recognized uh, tribes in their um, trust and in, uh, in their on and off reservation land trusts. Okay. We also have uh, emergency uh, map for emergency management for uh, working with uh, uh, FEMA. We have the Census Business Builder, which is a, a uh, awesome tool if you're either a uh, small businessman trying to start a business um, or a group looking to define a larger regional area. We, of course, have our uh, Tiger Line shape files, which, um, interestingly enough, uh, they define all of the legal boundaries um, that the U.S. Uh, uses. There are state databases that are, you know, slightly different, but it's all your legal boundaries, um, you know, your school districts, your legislative districts. Um, voting districts, uh, so on and so forth, congressional districts. The uh, the, the interesting aside from that is my my grandfather was worked for um, 50 years for the uh, U.S. Geological Survey, and I would have always thought that you know they take care of all the geographies in the world. But I was very surprised when I came to the uh, uh, Census Bureau um, seven years ago and found that you know that's not true. Um, we also have a, for the developers out there, we have an application programming interface, very, again, very well documented site. And then, of course, we have data.census.gov, which is our um, enterprise tool 
to get to you know all of the data sets we have or it's it's heading that way there are some data sets that um, are taking more time than others to get over there um, all the data that was uh, previously available in, in American Fact Finder, uh, which was retired in March of last year, uh, is available um, or intended to be available out there again. I, I do give the uh, disclaimer that there are some data sets that aren't there yet. Um, all the data tools we have, you can get to by uh, going to the uh, data tools page, uh, and there's a more comprehensive list uh, listed there. Okay, first uh, demonstration I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take you folks over to our My Tribal area. Uh, the My Tribal area is a comprehensive data, uh, has comprehensive data profiles. It's downloadable, the information uh, you get there, and or you can share a link on your social media or uh, websites. Uh, through embedded code. Uh, these estimates are data-driven decisions, uh, help support data-driven decisions for tribal economic development, community planners, grant writers, Indian Health Services, uh, reservation schools, tribal legal leaders, partners to tribal nations, and, and probably a half dozen more that I didn't, or more that I didn't specify here. Backspace. Actually, what I'm going to do is very quickly go into a demo of it. Um, so uh, we have um, uh, very, it's a very user, very easy uh, user interface to use. Um, I'm going to use the uh, Isabella tribe up in um, uh, Michigan to uh, pull it up. I'm just typing in the first couple of letters and I can pull up the tribe. Or I can go to select a state, in this case, Michigan, and select the tribal area from the list that drops down. Okay. And again, I'm going to be able to uh, see characteristics from the uh, uh, latest American Community Survey data released, which was the, um, uh, the five-year data uh, from uh, 2015 to 2019, uh, released in December of last year. Um, we're able to see, you know, all of those uh, great characteristics that I showed on, hey, wh what, what do we get? What information do we glean out of the data? Um, so age, race, ethnicity, um, place of birth, ancestry, um, you know, veteran status, and so forth. On the Jobs tab, we grab that information uh, related to um, to employment statistics, um, where folks are employed, and uh, also their commuting patterns to work, whether they uh, drive a car, uh, walk, or um, seek uh, public transportation or carpool. Um, it also gives us the you know, mean travel time for uh, people to their work desk destination. We go down and we look at some occupational uh, information, as well as um, uh, industry uh, that's reported on the uh, uh, American Community Survey. Okay. And again, it's the same is true for housing and economics and education. So it's all of the data you would get from a data profile uh, available for download from the American Community Survey, but an easy to get to place. And again, uh, you can embed this um, on a web page or you can link it from social media to here. You, do, you can download the data, as I, as I said before, by hitting the, uh, the download button. And you can either have, you know, send them the, uh, the, the CVS of the file, the link to the page, um, or the embedded code that they can download. Okay. And that download function was right here on the uh, right-hand side at the bottom of the, the uh, menu. Okay. So that's um, my tribal nation. Um, the map is just simply a small map for illustrative purposes to get a larger map of the area. Um, you could go to the uh, uh, 
Tiger Web uh, to pull those specific maps up of, of your well-defined area. Let me pop back over to my PowerPoint. Another really cool we have, uh, <clears throat> another really cool tool we have is um, the on the map uh, function. It's our local uh, employment dynamics uh, data uh, that gives us information on um, how many people are live and work in an area, how many people go somewhere else to uh, work, and basically those inflows and outflows. We also look at by distance and direction, and by uh, North American industry classification system uh, codes, NAICS codes. Um, we can do the we can do some of these uh, comprehensive reports. Um, but it's a it's a great site too, and I encourage anybody who thinks about um, uh, you know starting a business or you know determining um, how people flow through an area um, that this is a, a great resource to have along with another product I'll show you guys Business Builder in a in a little bit. Okay. The uh, the next one is a a really neat. It's it's been a collaboration that. Started between the uh, Census Bureau and the and FEMA, and it includes data from the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, Department of Interior, the Department of Agriculture. And the really cool thing about this uh, about the on the map is this data, the actual data and uh, disaster uh, declarations are updated as they happen. So it's it's real time data. What they get underneath of it is they get the ability to um, uh, dive down into an area. Uh, for instance, I, I chose up here in uh, Michigan, this little guy to analyze uh, what this disaster was. Okay. A federal declaration uh, had been uh, declared um, and this is the area that it was declared in. And we get to be able to see very quick uh, statistics for emergency managers to see what is the impact on that area that's affected, um, both from uh, household to uh, uh, population to race to, uh, you know, whether they can speak English or not, whether or not you have uh, disability. Well, how, how impacted is um, all of these areas, but very quickly those questions to be answered in the uh, actual impacted area. So uh, it's very good information. And again, it's uh, it, the, the ACS data, the American Community Survey data is updated annually. And then the, um, uh, the household data or the, um, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, declarations and what's going on um, map wise is, uh, it is uh, updated um, as it happens by the agencies uh, that I, I mentioned before, like the Weather Service, FEMA, uh, so on and so forth. Business Builder. Um, Business Builder is a great product to say, hey, I want to open up a uh, auto repair business in Isabella County, Michigan. What's that going to look like for me as a small business person, not a large background in data? I can actually come in and specify the area, um, look at how many, uh, this is the total number in the U.S. of how many people uh, work in the auto repair industry. Um, and then uh, I can drill down, uh, create maps with several different variables, say like I want to look at, um, you know, how many people, uh, in, you know, age uh, uh, 18 to 24, are in a particular area, uh, what the mean dollar volume is. The really cool thing about Census Business Builders, then I can create a report uh, that'll tell me about my customers, um, businesses that are out there like mine, uh, and consumer spending, which actually comes from uh, from credit card data from Esri. The, uh, uh, those are the ArcGIS map people. And uh, that data is, is then displayed so you can tell how much are people spending on automobile repairs uh, in, in the geographical area that, um, that, I, that I specify as Bell County. 
The other new product we have is Census uh, Business Builder Regional Analyst Edition. And this is really cool because what you can do as an organization is you can specify an area. I can add all the counties around it and call this, let's call the service area. Um, and then I can get um, you know, all of the statistics once I define that. I can then get a report based on uh, who my customers are and what businesses are like mine and uh, spending. So um, it, it gives you statistics for the entire area, okay? Without having a um, industry code special uh, specified like we did in the small business edition. And that brings us to um, our workhorse, which is data.census.gov. Um, and I'm just gonna flip over for a, a quick live demo of that. And everything that we, that we do in data.census.gov, I always start people from our homepage, tell them, hey, go on down to the advanced search. Um, you can type stuff in here uh, and, and be able to find it. Um, you'll get some quick facts and some quick tables, but I like a more controlled search. So I go into the advanced search. And in this case, I'm going to uh, select, um, I'm gonna go with the uh, topic and I'm gonna go down here and um, look at populations and people. I'm gonna pop over and, um, I'm sorry, it wasn't populations and people. I'm going to race and uh, ethnicity. And then I'm going to take a look at um, American, Indi American Indian and Native Alaskan tribes and get the statistics uh, for those areas. So that's my first qualifier. My second one, if you'll notice, when I hit the American Indian Native Alaskan, a, um, a selection filter popped up here. That means that this is the topic in my search. I'm going to go over and I'm going to select my geography and I'm going to go ahead in this case select um, county within Michigan and then Isabella County. Now I could scroll down this list of Isabella or I could come up to the spyglass right here in the upper left hand side and just start typing in Isabella. Oh, there we go. Uh, Isabella County, Michigan. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit search. Okay, and the search is gonna provide me with uh, a list of uh, tables that are available um, in, within the, uh, uh, in this case, uh, the American Community Survey. Some tables will be if I specified survey, I could get the ones just for the decennial. Um, if I just wanted to look at North American industry code or economic data, I could um, narrow that search down uh, in on the actual um, uh, search criteria. I can get back to that search criteria by hitting the filter button and then be able to add any um, other things I'd like to, uh, um, any other things to narrow down the data that's available for me. And then um, I can also, I can not only look at tables, but I can also look at maps that were, are available. Pretty much all the data I have, um, I can uh, pull up and be able to see the, uh, the map of that area. So I'm gonna just choose uh, American Indian and Native Alaskans in, at the county level, um, you know, there's, 2,271 uh, uh, within this county. Now I could look at a range of counties and be able to pull, you know, be able to see the legend uh, created for uh, each one of them. Again, I can do that with race. I can do that with any one of the American community cohorts, any one of the decennial um, uh, cohorts, or from uh, the economic census, uh, any of those, um, those particular uh, areas of, of interest, okay? And David, hi, this is Dion. Um, we're getting a few questions from the chat that I wanted to make sure 
Uh, yeah, I'm getting, ready, ready, to, I'm getting ready to roll you there. Okay, okay, so let me ask the first question to you. Um, sure. One of the uh, participants asked, um, is there a way for tribal communities to better track ACS to help those who need it or don't understand it? Yeah, well, yeah, there's a couple of different ways um, that I could think of. One, um, please uh, feel free to engage uh, data dissemination specialists like me. Um, Dion will give you a little more information how to uh, globally uh, connect with um, this group. Uh, we're out here right now. We're we're recovering our numbers from the uh, decennial census, um, our actual people numbers. Um, so we're at about a 25 uh, person uh, uh, team right now. But we do do webinars, uh, training series. We also have those handbooks that I um, alluded to earlier on the American Community Survey. Um, there's a lot of neat uh, handbooks out there that you can read. And uh, we have some web resources uh, through Census Academy that um, work very well. So awesome. And David, we have another question. Um, regarding my tribal area, and you may have alluded to this, but um, is the data broken out specifically by race? Well, there is race data that's available up there. If you wanted more, it's 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 like a general profile, uh, we, uh, a data profile 05, we would call it, where it's just a, uh, a drop of all the information that's available in those areas. For um, for the tribal areas, if you wanted that more detailed uh, breakdown of uh, of the race components, then you would go to data.census.gov and really draw down on uh, exactly what is, what you wanted under race. If you if you wanted, uh, you know, say like uh, uh, AN or Alaska Native, um, you know, all the ones who identify as um, a white, black, um, Asian, um, uh, Pacific Islander, and other and or um, actual uh, AIN itself. And then of course you can look at ethnicity um, in terms of um, uh, either Hispanic or not Hispanic. So that That's is so those awesome. detailed breakdowns are available from data.census.gov, whereas it's more the overview in the my tribal area. Understood. Thank you so much for that. And I have a few more questions, but a, a quick reminder to all of our participants, uh, due to the volume of participants, unfortunately, we won't be able to answer every question. So if you have a question that's not answered, uh, feel free to contact data hyphen ask, which is ASK, dot census dot gov. Um, and of course, for any other inquiries regarding apportionment or redistricting, uh, you'll reach out to the public information office at PIO at census dot gov. Another question to you, David, uh, is there a way for tribal data to show who is a citizen of a federal or state recognized tribe or nation, especially from other states? Uh, the only information we could give uh, in the American Community Survey is if uh, people uh, have associated themselves with um, a tribal name, not a uh, actual uh, tribal reservation area. Um, that data is kept by uh, the tribes themselves. Uh, they, maintain, they maintain that data. So um, we do not uh, uh, track the we track the people who live on housing units within the boundaries of the uh, uh, of the um, on trust and off trust lands that actually physically live there. We don't track the membership of of the tribes. Uh, understood. And the next question, though, I do believe it's a two prong question. Um, mm -hmm. I do believe uh, it's more of a partnership question, but I'm sure you'll be able to answer it as one of our masterful DDS specialists. Uh, how do you interact with tribal entities through the census? What are some of the engagement strategies? And as a follow up, where might they find the uh, tribal outreach plan on the Census Bureau website? Okay. Well, uh, first off, uh, how you en uh, how we engage the uh, uh, the tribes are we do that out of the data dissemin data um, dissemination and training branch, 
and uh, we we have the people assigned to re to states. For instance, I'm now assigned to Minnesota, Wisconsin, and um, Michigan. And once once all the 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 dust kind of settles from uh, 2020 here. Um, I'll be re-engaging folks and seeing what their, you know, what their needs are. I'll, I typically engage with uh, uh, myself. I typically engage with uh, uh, tribal operations managers, um, health departments, uh, police departments, or justice uh, department. It all depends on how the uh, tribe is structured and who I'm re reaching out to. Um, also, the, you know, it's, it's always interesting sometimes to, uh, uh, reach out to the um, tribal councils, but I really target the people who are actually doing the work, writing the grants, and needing that information. Um, as far as the tribal outreach plan, um, I'm going to have to punt that one over to um, uh, Congressional Affairs, uh, uh, Intergovernmental Affairs, uh, because they would be able to answer that question. So we'll get that answered um, outside of the uh, uh, the Q&A here. Understood. And so let me provide that contact information one more time. Um, if you want to follow up to that question or have additional questions, please contact data-ask.census.gov. A quick point, David, real quick. Um, just to clarify the last statement um, regarding um, citizenship status or tribal citizenship status, that is, um, uh, of course, as you know, the census does not collect information on tribal citizenship status. Uh, that is private tribal information and is the choice of tribal nations to share or to not share. Did you want to expand, um, expound on that a little further, David, um, so that everyone understands uh, the context of your last comments regarding that question? Okay, yeah, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into um, the, my tribal area and we'll slide down to the um, uh, the ancestry, not the ancestry, the, uh, that it got me here. They moved it, or I moved it. Um, at any rate, there is a section in the American Con uh, Community Survey that under the uh, ancestry section for um, the uh, American Indians, uh, they are spelled out by actual tribal name, um, whether you're Potawatomi, whether you're Sioux, whether you're Cherokee, but it doesn't tie to a tribal affiliation. Um, so if we say all the Potawatomi, Potawatomi people uh, identified in Michigan, there's several different Potawatomi tribes that are located in that state. And we don't track which um, which tribe they specifically belong to. We track that they're identifying uh, as a uh, Potawatomi uh, ancestry origin. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, one thing I, I didn't show you guys is before the Q&A state, you know, my, my uh, contact information is out there. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Or send that um, send that uh, that question or data request to uh, census.askdata uh, at census.gov, and that connects you with um, we who go out and work with folks to understand the data, uh, use it, we train people on it. So with that, I'm going to turn that back over to you, Dion. Thank you so much, David. And I'll quickly repeat that you can reach David Schuler. Um, at david.f as in Frank, dot Schuler, S C H U L E R, at census.gov. And David, we so appreciate the training that you've provided. Um, it really uh, opened my eyes to how to use several of the resources um, that are available. And to all of our participants, for your convenience and future reference, please expect a PDF and a link for today's presentation within. 48 hours. Um, there's so much at our fingertips on census.gov, Census Academy page uh, there. Um, and, and I still see that they're showing David's uh, contact information, and that's wonderful. 
Uh, just to let you know, we have also a census.gov academy page, um, and there's so much there for our um, awareness and knowledge. Uh, we can find, for example, information on data dissemination and training, such as the type we had today. Uh, there are options to request a free data training for your organization, um, and that, again, is free of charge, and you really can't beat that. You can also receive our data gems, which are short how-to videos aimed at helping you increase your knowledge of census data. And guess what? We can deliver those directly to your inbox. And you can also gain access to our easy learn at your own pace tutorials. So we really are here for you and want you to know that you can always count on us um, to assist. You can also interact with our instructors. Uh, on the webinars uh, for additional information and guidance. We have several data summits that we are presenting between now and the month of August. You can find all that information on the Census Academy page on census.gov. Uh, simply in the navigation bar at the top, click on webinars, find which one suits your needs, and then register. It's a one-stop shop, easy as one, two, three. We also want your feedback. Uh, there are several ways to tell us what you think about today's session. First, be on the lookout for a post-summit email with a general question about your experience today. Please take time to reply immediately. We really do value your input. You may also contact your regional office via phone or email. And of course, as you have been doing over the last year, Connect with your local partnership specialist with any comments or questions. I'm going to take you to um, contact information of our regional offices uh, so that you can contact your regional office directly. If you are in the Atlanta region, um, our regional director there is George Grandy, Jr., and his email address is atlanta.regional.office at census.gov. In our region, the Chicago region, our wonderful regional director is Marilyn A. Sanders, who you met earlier in the presentation, and you can contact Ms. Sanders at chicago.regional.office at census.gov. In the Denver, Dallas region, your regional director, Ms. Kathy Lacey, and uh, reach Ms. Lacey at denver.regional.office at census.gov. In Los Angeles, you did it, but be careful here. Um, you're going to hit los, L-O-S, dot Angeles, dot regional, dot office, at census, dot gov. In New York, uh, Ian Ho, Ian Ho is your regional director, um, and that email is new, dot York, dot regional, dot office, at census, dot gov. I think you guys are getting the flow of this in Philadelphia, our final regional office, uh, that would be philadelphia.regional.office at census.gov. Thank you again for your participation. And at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Janine Beasley, our wonderful host uh, for today, to allow her to close us out. Uh, Janine, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Deanna. Thank you, David, for a great presentation. Boy, that is some very helpful information, and I'm getting feedback through the chat that's saying, thanks, everyone, good presentation, very informative and helpful. And that's our goal for today, um, for the information that was provided today to be helpful. Um, and then you can explore census.gov as well as the Census Academy page to find out more on how to serve your community. Um, before we go, um, here's my contact information. Um, for the Chicago region. Those states in the Chicago region um, include Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arkansas, Minnesota, Missouri, and Iowa. You can reach me directly at janine.m.beasley at 2020census.gov. I just want to take time to thank you so very much for joining us for today's summit, Census Bureau Data, for the American Indian and Alaska Native population and businesses. Thank you to our Census Bureau leadership, Acting Director Dr. Ron Jarman, 
Chicago Regional Director, Marilyn A. Sanders, our Area Census Regional Manager, Elisa Johnson, and our very special guest, Chris Kolarok, as well as Gwen Lomayezba, our presenter, David Schuler, Michelle Butler, and my colleague, Dion Roberts Omega. Before we close out today's session, I'd like to review our objectives for this summit. I hope this session was able to increase your awareness of the vast data products available through the U.S. Census Bureau. I hope you're better equipped to utilize some of the free online tools available on census.gov. And more importantly, we were able to provide you with resources and toolkits to assist you with navigating data available through census.gov, such as on data.census.gov and the My Travel Tribal app. There has been a wealth of information shared today, and we want you to leave this webinar with the inspiration to spread the word that data are for everyone from all walks of life. Thank you for joining us today, and please expect the PDF and a resource sheet for today's presentation within 48 hours. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon.